Good morning to everybody. It is good to be happening with one another, even over the distance, coming together that we might praise the Lord because we know that He is worthy of our praise. And as we begin this morning, and I pray that you have read the scripture that I did send out ahead of time. If not, we'll be looking at Colossians 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 4. Colossians 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 4. And as we're ready, I know we're ready to worship the Lord, aren't we? We're ready to praise God because He is so good. And then you're wondering who this is next to me. For those who do not know, this is First Lady Rochelle Watson of the St. Mark United Methodist, Mer Methodist Church in beautiful downtown Hanover near the Arundel Mills Mall and Maryland Live. But we are all alive today. We are all excited yes, today yes, yes, that yes. God woke us up this morning yes, to start us on our way. So First Lady Rochelle Watson is going to open us with a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Pray for us. This is our first time doing a <laughs> team thing. In... Psalm 46, the 46th division of Psalm, it says, it starts off with, <clears throat> God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And it goes on to say that, therefore, we will not fear. And though the earth should change as the earth is changing, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. But in that 10th verse, it says, be still and know that I am God. God is telling us right now to be still and know that he is God. So pray along with us. And as we pray this morning, as you want to lift up names of those who may be going through this coronavirus, you may have lost a loved one, you may have lost your job. You may not be working. Finances might not be what they used to be. Just lift those concerns up to God right now. Oh, God, we thank you today just for the risen Savior. We thank you, oh, God, that even as things seem to be so tough right now, but, God, you told us to be still yes, Lord. and know that you are God. Mm, mm, mm. There was a purpose for Jesus to have to go through what he went through. But God, you said for us to be still yes, and know that you are God. And so Lord. God, right now, we thank you right now, Lord. for this Resurrection Sunday. Yes. We thank you, oh God, that, that Jesus has risen and now he lives in our hearts. He mm. lives in our spirits. He lives in our souls. And, and not just lives there, but wants us to go out and be with his people. And so, God, right now, even in the midst of all that we are going through, yes, yes. we thank you that we're just, even right now, just to be able to stand in your presence, pray in your presence, yes, preach Lord. Yes, Lord. in your presence, mm. be with you mm. in your presence. Yes, Lord. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We pray over our pastor this morning as he brings us your word. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And I, I do want to lift up. I've been asked to lift up as we did last Sunday. I'm going to do it on the front end and also on the back end. But um, let me see. That's backward there. Okay. I'm still working at that stuff that turns out to be backward. But I want you to write down our website because we're going to be posting there we're going to be sharing information there you don't have to be a member to go to our website but come and check us out it is in small cap letters s-t-m-a-r-k-u-m-c-h-a-n-o-v-e-r dot o-r-g let me do that again i'll slow it down a little bit 
S-T-M-A-R-K-U-M-C-H-A-N-O-V-E-R dot O-R-G. Please visit our website and see those things that we're about and ministries we're try still trying to hold up in the midst of this pandemic. Now, my brothers and sisters, you know, uh, some time ago, uh, when I was young and did a lot of reading, I remember a book that stood out for me. It was called Animal Farm. It was called Animal Farm. And what the book was about was the animals on this farm were being abused and misused by Farmer Brown and his wife and family. And one day they woke up and they decided we don't need them. They need us, but we don't need them. So there was a revolt. There was a revolution. And all the animals together, every one of them rose up and they attacked Farmer Brown and his family. They ran them off the property. Never, never, never to return again. But then the animals began to organize themselves, to organize themselves in such a way that they were going to take care of one another. They were going to come together. The cows, the horses, the chickens, the pigs, all the animals coming together on the farm, claiming the farm, and they were going to work together so that everyone would receive what they needed as they were on the journey together. And one of the rules they had was initially that no one, no one at all, would be living in the farmer's house. No one, no animal would live in the farmer's house. But the pigs got together. They got together and said, you know, we really made this thing happen. And we are the ones helping to make the decisions. So why don't we move in to the farmer's house? So they did. They did. And one of the other things that they had talked about after the revolution was that they would never, ever wear the farmer's clothing. Well, long story short, the pigs began to think they were better, more intelligent. They knew more, could do more, and especially being in charge. They could make sure everybody else was doing what they needed to do. And so the process began to happen that the pigs began to become just like, if not more brutal, than the farmers. They began to act like the farmer did in the relationship to the animals. They began to dress like the farmer dressed. And lo and behold, you know what happened. How many times have we, as a people, as a culture, as a race, as human beings, struggled with the same thing that happened down on the farm? Folk thinking believing that they know more, can do more, and want to elevate themselves and press others down. You see, that's how it is, my brothers and sisters, when we deal with the human condition and not the spiritual condition. That's what happens when we forget it is about our relationship to our risen Savior, who we have celebrated, we have thought about, we have reflected on during this Easter season. Friday was Resurrection Friday. And then there was a day in between. And then we know what this morning, this morning, Resurrection Sunday, is all about. 
But my brothers and sisters, when I think about that story and think about our history, when I think about time and time again where the human race has not been able to come together, has not been able to get together, have not been able to pray together, we are the human race. Different color, different languages, different gifts. Could it be in the midst of all of this pandemic, in this virus situation, that God is trying to tell us something. That God is trying to help us understand we have lost our way. I ask that those of you who receive the information to consider the topic today, to what we're going to be talking about today, to what we're going to be looking at today, to look at it from the sense of I owe, I owe. I owe, I owe. Somebody said, I owe, I owe. So off to work I go. Do you feel like that sometimes? The scripture this morning is talking about new life. New life, not the old life, not the old ways, but new life in Jesus Christ. It says, so if you have been raised with Christ, Seek. Seek. What are you looking for this morning? What are you looking for every day? It says, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated. He is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds. Set your way of thinking on things that are above and not on things that are on earth. For you have died. You have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ comes who is your life is revealed. When Christ who is your life is revealed. Then you will also be revealed with him in glory. So what is that all about? I work, I, I'm sorry, I go, I go, because I owe, I owe. How many of us are in debt? How many of us have purchased things? Because we are concerned about how we look to others. How many times, and even in this Time. Even in this moment, how many of us are wondering what's going to happen to us? We have become a consuming society. We have become a wasteful society. We have become those who have ignored. Come on, we got to be honest about this now. And I don't want you to think about anybody else but you. You have to look at you. Don't look at nobody else, but look at you. And what are you thinking about you? Thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to? Buying things to impress others? A big McMansion? And let your crying and suffering and wondering, even before all of this happened, wondering, how are you going to make it? Will someone find out that I'm not everything that I'm purporting to be? You see, my brothers and sisters, we have lost the sense of what matters most, what is more valuable to us. We have lost the sense of how we ought to be as a people, as a race, as a culture, as part of the human race, a race that values what others may think, what others may feel, especially if we get to the point where I believe God wants us to be, and he's tried it again and again and again. This is not the first time that the human race has been impacted by something that is devastating. There have been other times in history when 
calamity has arrived at our doorstep because I believe we were not doing what God wanted us to do. Some of you saw the Ten Commandments. Don't act like you didn't watch it again and again and again. Don't act like you don't wait every year for it to come around and see how Moses does. But see, there it is. Even as the children of Israel crossed over through the sea and came to the other side and then began their pilgrimage, their journey to the promised land, what happens when God doesn't show up quick enough for you. When God doesn't show up in the right way to you. Most of us, if not all of us, then we try to do it our way. And how did that work for you? How's that working for you? Probably not good at all, especially right now. But there we are in a situation because we owe... And we're about to have a panic attack about whether or not we're going to make it through. So the children of Israel, Moses is leading them. Moses is leading them. But it's taking too long for some folk in the parade. And so there were those as Moses, y'all know the story, Moses went up on the mountain. He went up on the mountaintop. And when he got to the mountaintop to see the bush that was burning and burning and burning, and he got the Ten Commandments. And then he came back down off the mountain to those hard-necked, stiff-necked people who were complaining because they didn't get to the promised land in a straight, quick way. And y'all know the story. They had to wander in the wilderness. Some of them died off. It was almost like a new generation had sprung up. To get into the promised land. My brothers and sisters. Does that sound like us? God I'll call you when I need you. I don't read you right now. Because I'm riding high. I got it going on. And how many times. Again and again and again and again. Has that happened. With the human race. When the more we begin to separate ourselves, the more we begin to hate ourselves and hate others around us, the more we begin to visualize folk as something other than a child of God. And so how many times has God stepped in to remind us even now, I am the Lord God Almighty. I am the one who made Heaven and earth. You got your eyes focused on the wrong thing. How many times have you been to somebody to get help? <laughs> Especially children sometimes and grandchildren. They come asking, I need money for this. I need money for that. And, 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 and I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. <laughs> and then <laughs> payday never comes. Don't we do God like that? I got this, God. And then, Lord, oh, Lord, hear my prayer. I need you. Oh, I need you. Help me, Lord. And then as soon as the Lord provides what we needed, we moved on our way forgetting. How can and how ought you think about how I can give back to the one who has blessed me in such a powerful, special way. I owe, I owe. And what I believe we owe, what I believe I owe, I owe it all to him. He is the one who picks me up. He is the one who guides me every day. When I, when I hear a voice, when I get a vision, I've learned on my journey that I could depend on him more than anyone else. 
I learned that he will walk with you. He will talk with you. He will tell you, tell me, tell us when we're off track. And we are mightily off track now. And see what God is giving us an opportunity to forget about what I owe to the world. But to look at what it is that I owe to Jesus. And God is having us now in our homes with our spouses, our, our, our children, and maybe some of you in an extended family situation. And if you're single and by yourself, you ought to have already hooked up with some other folk that you can reach out to. Because the one I owe it all to, I don't know about you, but I owe it all to him. I know I would not be where I am, who I am, as I am, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I had to step over to his side. I was over here for a while. I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. I thought I could do it all. But the Lord has a way of waking you up. And I've said many times about I should have been dead so many times on my journey from a young child almost drowning at Camp Drum, New York. As a young tyke, out there in the water, stepped in a hole and went down. Next thing I know, I'm on a beach. And the lifeguards finally are resuscitating me. Still at Camp Drum, New York. There I was climbing a tree. Fell out, knocked out, laying on the ground for a while. But the Lord made a way. Lifeguard down at West River in my younger days, you know, uh, when you were a lifeguard and you construct that stuff, you know, folk be looking at you. Mm-hmm. I know y'all laughing now. I was on a diving board, sure enough, doing a backflip. Caught my head on the corner of the diving board. And they told me that it had just been a little different. Just a few more inches, and I would have snapped my neck. Ain't God good? So I don't know what your story is, but I know what mine is. And my brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say, as we think about how we owe and who we owe, God has given us an opportunity in our homes, in our families. God has given us an opportunity and privilege to bring our families together. I have mentioned sometimes at funerals, I don't always see in the obituary, especially in the beginning, that this person was raised in a Christian home. And what is that saying? As we have children who have poured out of those homes. So my brothers and sisters, God trying to tell you, trying to tell me, trying to tell us, whoever's in the household, whoever needs to be there, but now you are the church. You're the home church. You ought to be getting that Bible out. And I've heard some families have already texted me, have already said to me, have already indicated they are having worship in their house, in their home. Yeah, because the house is not a home. A home is where love abides. A home is where folk are ready to deal with one another and not pretend with one another. A home is where the word of God is being lifted up. A home is where love abides 24-7. And so, my brothers and sisters, you and I, all of us, need to reassess. We don't know how long this situation is going to be with us. But you got family. Hug them every morning. Children, spouse, grandparents. Let us affirm one another in the name of Jesus. For the writer again says and has reminded us that we don't have to be like those seven dwarfs were. Y'all know about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And when they would be going to the mine, they would say, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. 
But in Colossians, we're being told. We're being offered an opportunity. For you have died, the writer says. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. He's trying to tell us the most important relationship you can ever have is that personal. Mama got to have her personal. Daddy got to have his personal. Sister Jane got to have her personal. The children need to understand how important that is. It's not all about me, but it is about the we. And maybe in this year, 2020, perfect vision, God is trying to have us do a vision check to begin to see each other. Some of us don't even know our neighbors, do we? Some of us don't want to talk to our co-workers because it's all about me. All about me. What I want, what I can get. And so God, his hand has moved. And moved in a powerful way. So, what you going to do, my brothers and sisters? A light has come into the world. And we're remembering that Jesus died for you and me, even, even while, while we were yet sinners. But as he came, and as he rose, on this Resurrection Sunday, he rose for you. He rose for you, for me, for those who he has blessed us with in our family circle, those who he has spoken to in our friendship circle. You never, ever have enough. And God's economy. You never have enough until you begin to share what you have now. When we do communion, we break the bread so that all can receive. When we have communion, we drink from the cup so that all can receive. And as we do what we do, going through the motions, I invite you to begin to go through the emotions, to feel it, for you to feel it personally, and for you to want to be that one that he has claimed as his own, because you claimed him. And in that claiming, you might also open your arms wide. Jesus on that cross, hanging high, and it said they stretched him wide. And you know what he did when you think about the last seven words. But he said, da, 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 forgive them for they know not what they do. And so my brothers and sisters, God is calling us to transform your home first. And then begin to let that love of Jesus that is being embedded in that which is being lifted up as being not important but critical 
to life's journey. You don't know how much time you have. I don't know how much time I have. So every day when I work up, I want to do some stuff that reflects the Jesus in me. I want to listen to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can lead God and direct me and have me at the right place at the right time so I can see the miracle that he is doing and using me to be a part of that. And not because I've been to seminary, not because I'm pastor churches, but because I don't mind sharing the love that Christ has put in me. Touching me in a way. Touching, receiving, and then sharing. Well, we all want to be wanted. We all want someone to want us. Choose, my brothers and sisters, choose the invitation that Jesus is extending to you. Choose to follow him and keep him as numero uno. I love my wife, Rochelle, but she's not number one. I think she's glad she's not number one because she knows the one that is front is Jesus. And with him taking care of my ups and my downs, it helped me be that vessel that God can use. He will give you everything you need and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. He's ready to give you everything you need. But then is the openness to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to guide you on your path, the path that God has just for you. Try it. I believe you'll like it. For me, I love it. And would have it no other way. I would invite you again. I'm sorry. ThankMarkHanover.org. Check us out. And you know, my brothers and sisters, I know these are trying times. And there are ministries that are yet going. Things that are yet happening. And I remember way back when they talked about to get a million people to give you one dollar. That's a million dollars. <laughs> We're all going through. There's no doubt about that. We're all afraid. And that's false evidence appearing real. When you get to know him, my brothers and sisters, and not a shame of letting people know that you are his disciples, you're going to see how your life and the lives that you touch will be radically, not changed, radically transformed. Amen. Amen. Transformation is about I become something that I can't be anything else but. So the old self is left behind. And the new self has come into being. Amen. So this is Resurrection Sunday. And it is a day of hope and encouragement. It is a day that we just acknowledge and praise out loud that Jesus is risen. So we couldn't leave this, this, this wonderful message without just praising him in song. And so I'm, I'm going to ask you to join us. And if you can, with your heart or your feet, stand as we are just going to sing to the glory of God as we in this, and invite this everybody message. in your household, wherever you are, to join in Amen. also. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down. Glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I laid. Since I laid. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. 
burdens are laid. My burdens down. Oh, burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. Since I laid my burdens down. Yeah, I feel better. I feel better. So much better. Yes, since I lay my burden down. Amen, amen. God All right, y'all, that's a wrap. Hope you've been blessed. Share with others and let us continue to keep in touch with one another and support one another in these trying, trying times. Amen. All right. Amen, amen. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's the end of my singing tour. Oh. <laughs>